Salam Allah. Salam Alaikum. Shalom. Hotep. Peace. Peace. Peace to the family. Peace to the holy nation of Islam. All the mighty, mighty FOI and MGT out there in the wicked wilderness of North America, rather you in North America, Central America, South America, or anywhere around the world. Surely Satan calls, seeks to destroy the righteous. You know what I mean? But by the grace of Almighty God, the law in the person of the Master Fard Muhammad, to whom all praises are due forever, we will survive America. But love, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. That's the FOI MGT money manual. Um, I want to basically give you a clarification so you can understand. And I want to give you the actual um, sources, if you will. Now, I mean, I don't like teaching the messenger teachings in a vacuum. I like to give you, I mean, the opportunity to research it on yourself. Now, I mean, the messenger himself told us, he says, don't take his teachings hook, line, and sinker. Now, I mean, he said, you piece it apart, study it. Now, I mean, you know, because his thing was, he was confident that that which Master Fart Muhammad revealed to him was the truth. Now, I mean, and, you know, we should not say we believe it because the messenger believes it. We should take and say, where did the messenger say it? Why did the messenger say it? When did the messenger say it? And if the messenger said it, then we should take and say, okay, let us study the direct. When I say direct, I'm a minister. I've been a minister over 40 years now. Don't take my word for it. I'm a minister. That means I'm nobody in the scheme of things. I'm, I'm like middle level management type stuff. Now, I mean, you want it straight from a law, not the Quran. Not your Bible, not your lesson. You want it straight from Master Far Muhammad. What did he say? Because if Master Far Muhammad said it or taught it, now I mean, I'm not talking how these. I'm not talking about what somebody else said that Master Far Muhammad said. I'm talking about the direct, original, life-giving teachings of the Most High Elijah Muhammad. You take Master Far Muhammad first, Messenger Elijah Muhammad second, the teachings, the direct teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Third, then you take and listen to us ministers, <laughs> captains, secretaries, lieutenants, whatever. Now, I mean, we play our little role. Now, I mean, you know, we, we you know, we, we help you to help yourself. Now, I mean, you know, protocol is important, but, you know, one of the things that happens in organized religions is that the priesthood or the officials start to supplant their image over the image of Yahweh, Allah, Jesus, the God, or what have you, you know what I mean? And what eventually happens is the, the, the people will say, that's right, when the minister is wrong. <laughs> the minister can't be wrong in our mind because we spooky. <laughs> I mean, we have to say, that's right. If the minister is teaching the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that's right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad. That's right. The captain is teaching the instructions of the minister. That's right. The secretary is teaching. See, that's how that go. Now, I mean, you know, you, you, have to, you have to have protocol. Now, I mean, you can't have the, your, your lips saying, bum, 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 bum. I'm going to beat like the heart. <laughs> I mean, you can't have the air say, oh, I know better than the brain. <laughs> I mean, you can't have, a, have your fist say, okay, we great box. You know what I mean? And your, your nose saying, I'm going to take the jab. <laughs> You're going to get a bloody nose. You know what I mean? So, so there's this there's, there's importance in the body Christ, as Jesus put it in the biblical sense. You know what I mean? So, um... Today, I'm going to take and um, pick up where we left off and then bring you up to some modern day, actually some information I just got today, something that you should, I'm going to put y'all down with, put y'all down with some jewels. You know what I mean? So my thing is put some money in your pocket. You know what I mean? You, you know, it's, it's, it's not just information in your head. You know what I mean? It's some money in your pocket. You know what I mean? Knowledge is power, family. 
Okay, so November the 28th, 1955. It's an important date in the nature of Islam. I'm going to summarize it and give you the short version. All right. When Masfar Muhammad came to the wicked wilderness of North America, he established a law's temples of Islam. He himself was the prophet or nabi of Islam. Prophet is the Arabic term for prophet. So 100% of the writings of Masfar Muhammad was as prophet W.D. Far, Prophet W.F. Muhammad, Prophet, 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 Nabi. That's, that's his position in the lessons, for example. We can't change the lessons. However, that did not negate the fact that he was all along Almighty God, Allah, in person. You know what I mean? See, see we, we get spooky because we don't understand prophecy. And when we do understand prophecy, we like to cherry pick prophecy and ignore the parts that we don't understand. I mean, it's like God came from team and he had horns coming out of his hands, but there was the hiding of his power. And we think of monsters and all this stuff. Like, nah, the message breaks it down, the message to the black man. You know what I mean? It's real simple, family. Masfar Muhammad was moving like God, as God. Because he knew if you came to the so-called American Negro, picture that, coming to the so-called American Negro back in the 30s, talking about you're the God of the universe, man, they'd be like, Negro, please. <laughs> I mean, you know how the mentality of 85% is. They mentally dead. You can't, you can't give them mentally dead. Like, the, like, the, like Paul said, you can't give them meat before you give them some milk. You can't give a baby a... a, a a max Philly cheese steak. I mean, you know, you got to give them some breast milk. You got to, you got to, you know what I mean? Come down to the level where the people is at. And this is where all the spooky stuff come from. People like, oh, the Elias came down. The Anunnaki was some magical beings. The Anunnaki was a no, nothing and nobody but black families <laughs> on our earth. They were Asiatic black people. They were living in uh, Iraq, the ancient Babylon, Persia, Iran, Canaan, Kemet, Egypt, you name it. They, our ancestors, were the ones that wrote the Holy Quran or Bible. Not the Holy Quran and the Bible. We ain't talking about the spooky stuff we got in this day and time. We're not talking about the 114 swords and the 66 books of the King James. We're saying the original script. It wasn't broken down in verses, didn't have no vowels, you know what I mean? You know, stuff like that there, you know, it's like the, the first Hebrew letter that start the prophecies, the scriptures, is Alif. The first Arabic Quranic letter is Alif. It signifies understanding. Not me, as a spooky, it's a whole bunch of Alifs. It signifies our leaves in the sense of you are our leaf. You are the understanding. Your goal, your striving is to see, not me, not this minister or that minister, this branch of the nation, on that branch of the nation, Islam, but to see yourself in the pantheon of the gods and goddesses. In the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's book, The 15,000 Year History, he specifically says that before the making of the devil, the promise of Dr. Yakub was he would, quote, make gods and goddesses out of those that followed him. Master Far Muhammad reverse engineered everything that Dr. Yakub did. Yakub brought the weakest part of us out. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Master Far Muhammad brought the strongest. Yakub wanted the government to take care of him and his followers for a certain amount of time. That's exactly what the messenger want and what the Muslims want and believe on the back of Muhammad Speaks and Final Call newspapers. He wants the government to do that. Dr. Yakub Malik Shabazz was a black god himself. He was a black man, just like you and me. 
You know what I mean? You know, it'd be like, oh, he was a big head scientist. Yeah, he he had an elongated brain. A whole bunch of people, especially when you study ancient Kemet. You know I mean, you go to South, you study all over the world, you'll find a lot of people who have these big cranial, you know what I mean? The Anunnaki had them. They, that's not because they were aliens. It's just that they had larger brain capacities. I mean, it was born genetically. Ain't no such thing as junk DNA family. It's a lot of stupid stuff. It's so much spooky stuff out there. I could never teach if I try to tear down all the trichnology. It's like we got to have faith in Master Muhammad and the Messenger. So you're going to have some teachings that you cannot show and prove. You have to believe it. You have like, like when we talk about the moon being blasted from the earth six six trillion years ago. We can we can take you into different sciences that support that theory. It all adds up, but we can't take you back there and show you. I can't take you to the the, the the volcano area where he dug into the earth and blew it up and all that kind of stuff like that. They're talking six six trillion years ago. You know what I mean. There's, there's too much of our story that's being hidden. You you go over South, you go over a Zania or so-called South Africa, for example. There are so many ancient artifacts and mines and cities. It's like, yo, where would we start? Like, I'm talking about so old. In fact, I, I you know, I want y'all to know. Um, just today, I, I forgot. What I've read it, I, I just I'm, I'm I'm always studying some science stuff. But the scientists just found out recently that they they got this super telescope that went to the actual ends of the of the universe as they know it, and they was expecting to see something like small galaxies because according to that theory, the Big Bang theory, I mean, you know, it was like. 700 million years ago, give or take. And when they look at the, the, the computer data, the mathematics, the binary code, zeros and ones, it shows that it's nothing like they thought or was teaching for the last hundred years. They like, what the heck? The short version is the scientist, NASA admits like, listen, we don't know why and we really don't want to get into this yet because they science. One thing I respect about scientists, white or black, scientists, true scientists, love to be wrong. See, when you're wrong, that means that someone is coming with that which is scientifically verifiable, that which is true. You know what I mean? So they basically found that these galaxies at the beginning of 700 million years ago, after the Big Bang, as they thought, look just like the galaxies nearby now. What does that mean? That means the evidence, again, is taking you back that the messenger's message will guide you through this age of best. They was always thinking like um, millions. First, they thought 6,000 years. Then they thought millions. Then they thought a few billion now they starting to, they ain't even said yet. They're going to say it in the future. They're going to be like, listen, we have no idea. We never did have an idea for real. We guessing, using educated guesses and extrapolating, what have you. But now it's starting to make sense when the messages say our earth is 76 trillion years old with human beings on it. Our sun is 78 trillion. Now, compare the trillions to that 700 million. The message is like, we sparked the stars 72 trillion years ago. It's, it's deep because he's giving you specific numbers. Now, I mean, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of people people think that the white man's ice is colder. He knows better. You know what I mean, but it's like, even when I'm, I'm in a situation where something I don't understand, I'm like, the messenger was right on so much stuff. I'd be a fool. Not to ride with the messengers' messes in this age of mess. I mean, it's like I don't have to see the mother plane. I'm like, why would he lie about that? And he taught the truth about all this other stuff. If he told us about um, hydraulics under the Great Pyramid of Giza, and Master Muhammad had black, brown, yellow, red scientists building this flying craft, and I'm like, 
why is that such a big thing? You know what I mean? I definitely believe white folks built flying craft. When I see a helicopter, an airplane, a rocket, we don't even look up no more. That's that's not even a surprise. Like, oh, the white man, he has flying vehicles. You know what I mean? Now, if they asked you to build it, if they told you to build a Boeing or a supersonic jet and all that kind of stuff, you'd be like, I, I don't know how to do that. You know what I mean? You know, if um, somebody flew uh, a square-shaped vehicle in the air or what have you, or uh, hoovered <laughs> something off a of sound waves traveling 1,120 feet per second, that levitation and elevation would be an unidentified flying object. That does not make me jump like, oh, it had to come from the aliens mixing into our, that's why we got junk DNA. It's like, come on. Think about that for a minute, family. Why would human beings have junk DNA? See, see, it's because we don't understand how things are grafted. If you, We need to go back to that message to the black man in America. Where is that message to the black man in America? Do I got it up here? Also, don't forget free Mumia. Power to the people. Free the supreme angels, the FY and MGT, set live the captive believers. That ain't never going to change. Not me. But, um, you know, in message to the black man, the message that lays out Dr. Yaku Malik Shabazz, this whole thing. Not me. And, and he lays it out in such a practical way mathematical, scientifical, scriptural, genetical way, it makes sense. I mean, it, it, I'm speaking as a believer, but if I was a disbeliever, I'd be like, brother, I believe Yakub existed or not. I believe that white people came from black people. Scientists be like, out of Africa, they be like, hey, listen, it's a lot of this stuff that's theory, but you talk to these scientists, they'd be like, yeah, well, you know, we, we could study the, the, the human genome and this, that, and this. It seemed like everybody came from black people, melanated people, as we like to call in this day and time. But if you take and talk to other scientists and put those scientists with the other scientists and say, what you think about these scientists? Well, these scientists say before there was an Africa, before the seven continents, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia, and Europe, according to our 99 Actual Facts lessons. Study your lessons. They're your blessings. According to our lessons, the seven land masses are all connected to one supercontinent called Asia. It's 2023. Africa, we love Africa. Of course we're from Africa. But where's Africa from? Ah, oh, now we're asking the right question. Africa broke off <laughs> of other people. So, so Madagascar broke off of Africa. It's like the, the Reed Sea, now known as the Red Sea. It's too close to Mecca. It's, it's, on other, it's like Egypt, the Red Sea, Mecca. Huh? You got the Suez Canal, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel. All that's all one, depending on which god or pharaoh is ruling, it's like not an alien god enslaving people to make gold and all this kind. It's black. Brown, yellow, and red people enslaving other people and their own people to make things happen. Human nature, first law of nature, self-preservation. You know what I mean? So it's nothing spooky and none of that stuff, family. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, it's, and it's um, it's just simply some things. It's just so old and so far in the distant past. We'll never know exactly who was who and what was what. But the, we can get the general picture. The general picture is like, you'd be like, oh, well, the God, um, he took out the eye of Hebrew Horus. And you know what I mean? That became the Wajetness. It's like, listen, that sounds like the uncle and nephew gang worn because he killed his pop. <laughs> it's real simple in the hood. <laughs> if, you, if you took it to any hood in America, they'd be like, you come to the projects, they be like, that sounds familiar. We, we we know stories like that, too. We could tell y'all some stuff about that, too. Now, I mean, you'd be on the tip like, so-and-so had, uh, he was moving. Um, my, my little young boys out of Coastville just got locked up the other day. Sad to say, 
Shout out to the brothers. Now I mean that's innocent. Now I mean, and they and they 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 doing that thing in the streets, whatever. Now I mean, and it's like they pushing poison. Now I mean, not promoting common unit in the community because they trying to feed their families and you know what I mean the black man trying to think that he can move like the like Satan when he's God because he don't have his God consciousness. So he like, oh, I got to do what the devil do. I mean, you'd be like, well, where did they get all this stuff from? They got it from you, Lucifer. They got it from Satan. I mean, it's like Al Capone and Lucky Luciano and all them dudes was like dressed up in, 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 in that black and they had the Thompson machine guns. And they doing drive-bys, you know what I mean? St. Valentine's Day massacres. They they selling um, illegal liquor, which is drugs back then. They selling, I mean, moonshine and, you know what I mean? Whatever, you know what I mean? They and they they grew out of that stupidity. They they realized that the bloodshed was too expensive. You know what I mean, they realized that. You know what I mean? It, it was like, why why is you trying to copy off the cartels when they making chump change? You know who's making real money? I I just had to pay the water bill, for example. PA, <laughs> what is it? PA American Water. If you're in Pennsylvania, they got a monopoly on the water. Like, they literally are legally on some gangster stuff with the water bill. I mean, we had Fios Verizon. They, they are some gangsters when it comes to cable bills. Gangsters when it when it comes to, to your iPhone bill. You know, Verizon and all that kind of stuff like that. Well, you, you got to pay Pico the electric bill and now, I mean, you know, you'll get some gasoline and put in your car. Now, I mean, turn the heat on in your home or whatever. Now, I mean, you know, it's like um, you got to pay school taxes even though you ain't no kids in school. I mean, you got you got to pay all these all these state taxes even though you driving your nice new tires on potholes. I mean, gangsters, politicians, black ones, white ones. Rich ones, poor ones, Jewish, black, brown, straight, gay, you name it. They all, in America, capitalism is imperialism. It's about the money. Now, we can sit around and pray to the sky, Lord, please bless me to pay these bills. Or we could take and enter into risky behavior, throwing rocks at the penitentiary. Well, I'm going to take and sell some drugs and get out the game and real, invest in real estate. No, you're going to have... The ATF, the FBI, and them kicking your mama door in, kicking your door in, taking your money, taking your guns, taking your drugs, and taking you into slavery. Listen, fam, don't want to go there. It's not worth it. Real, real, it's just it's it's better if you it, it's better to be free and struggling to pay your bills with your family. Than to be sitting inside the county, state, private, federal penitentiaries all around the world, know what I mean, with pictures of what you used to have. Know what I mean, you know, it's like, nah, it's, it's not worth it. Know what I mean, but at the same time, you know, one of the things I respect about Brother Minister Jeremiah Shahi Shabazz from Philadelphia, from Temple Number 12, one of the things he used to tell us back in the day. As you know, we was knuckleheads, mentally dead. I mean, we was super dead. But he, he we wouldn't listen to it. It's a Christian preacher at Zion Baptist Church and Minister Jeremiah Shabazz. Those were two elders that I always respected because they didn't hit us in the head with all the religious, just say no, be good, make prayer, come to church, come to the temple type stuff. That wasn't that. That's not how they moved. They used to like step one. You can always get a meal. I mean, you know, man, what you say about Father Divine and stuff like you can always get kids. We like eight, 20 cakes on a table free. They like, yeah, well, get the plate. Go get whatever y'all want. I ain't never in my life even, I mean, I, I get a tummy ache. I, I eat so much of that stuff free. Everything you want, whether it was pork, roast beef, turkey, cheese, vegan. Whatever. Now, I mean, you know, they would just feed the community. Now, I mean, and I, I'll never forget that. 
or them, not me. But one of the things that I liked about Jeremiah, he, he, he explained to us, he used to joke around a lot, but he used to, he used to tell us, um, as he, he was like, um, you can't go in someone's house and tell them not to eat pork if you're not going to put some fish in that refrigerator. And that, I really didn't get it back then, but it made sense as I got more mature in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It made, it's, it made sense once I made mistakes trying to teach that holy than thou stuff. <laughs> I mean, basically what he's, what he's showing us was like, listen, we know that pork is poison, but if you got a mother with six children and she got a refrigerator with some pork sausage, some eggs, some pork chops in there, whatever. You can't be like, oh, I'm Muslim now. We don't eat swine and throw it all in the trash. Because in her brain, she like, if you're God, <laughs> you can't show and tell. You have to show and prove you're God. You don't have to tell me the black man is God. Show me the black man is God. That's all you got. Meaning, if you come in the house like, oh, look, pork ain't good, just that and the other. We're going to eat steak. <laughs> We're going to eat these vegan. We're going to eat this fish. We're going to eat these chickens. We're going to have some barbecue chicken, some baked chicken. Look, it ain't good to eat fried food, so we're going to bake the chicken. The queen would respect that more. <laughs> I mean, she'd respect that more. She'd be like, come on. You know what I mean? You'd like, it's like, you'd be like, I, I don't eat pork. But you drink Henny. She look at, she live with you. She like quit faking the funk. We got bills to pay around here. I mean you you know what I mean you 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 crack the four eleven, you drink it, you drinking old English, a hunt. I mean you you know it's you drink coronas, you smoking blunts, but you don't eat pork. And that makes you holy how? I mean, be like you don't eat pork, but you eat McDonald's, you eat um garlic fries from Wendy's, you eat pizza and you know what I mean it's like come on. So we, the message said in our says, right, he said, we should not pretend to be holier than thou unless we're really holy. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I don't do the holier than thou thing. You know what I mean? And when I look at Masfar Muhammad and his mythology and the messenger and that mythology and how they mathematically move to help redeem and resurrect our people, they moved as God. You know what I mean? They showed and proved to me who they was through their actions and deeds. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't agree with everything Jeremiah said and did or the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or Silas, but you can't tell me they not gods. <laughs> their works shows and prove they're gods. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like that's what the message told Mark. He said, how, how can you say that man is not a carpenter and you're standing in the house that that man built? Come on, keep it real. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's like, Hey, that's why nobody can tell me nothing about Brother Minister Muta Kwan Ali in Philadelphia in Muhammad's Temple Number Twelve. Now, I mean, I'm like, I, I'm I'm putting on my state boots. Greg, go down to temple service. Now, I mean, Minister Rodney came in. Minister Muta Kwan came. Brother Minister Eric came in. Now, I mean, Brother Minister Kyle came. Brother Minister Rashid came. I'm like, yo, I'm loyal to those that's loyal. To me. I come up under divine ethics. So I was never raised with no spooky stuff. You know what I mean? So so it's like like the God Jesus put it, I'm with you to the ends of the earth. The struggle continues. It's get greater later. But of course, everybody's not going to be able to keep the same pace in the struggle. Some of us are going to get tired. Some of us are going to go too fast. Some are going to be too slow. Some are going to miss the boat. You know what I mean? Everybody's not going to get on the ark. Everybody's not going to get in the nation. It's just simply not realistic, you know what I mean? And we don't have the time to leave the doors open when we know the floods is coming, you know what I mean? So so, so we got to realize there's a war going on. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he knew what his critics was going to think. He knew that there were brothers in the ranks that was taller than him, smarter than him, louder than him. I mean, that's why I didn't care about that. His thing was he wanted the messenger to be the supreme minister. You know what I mean? And he wanted him to be Kareem Abdul Muhammad, 19 letters. 
I mean, shout out to 19 Keys. Yeah, I mean, he always dropped them jewels on the Sister Tanana Muhammad dropped them 19 Keys too. But the messenger understood where the nation of Islam was, and he understood where the nation of Islam had to go. So on his own volition, he had to use the knowledge to listen to and observe and manifest his individual distinct wisdom to make his knowledge known to us. That brought forth the understanding a picture one makes in his or her mind of knowledge. Not of superstition, but of knowledge. You know what I mean? So the messenger is moving where they like, he's prophet WD4, he left, he's, he's you know what I mean? He's the message like, nah, that was God in person. God in person? What, what is you talking about, Kareem? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you're the minister Kareem. That's how he used to put his, that's in the final cause of Islam, the messenger was minister Elijah Muhammad. You know what I mean? But he knew who he was. I mean, so as time went on, when you read Muhammad's speech, he's like, all right, I'm the messenger of Allah. I'm the last messenger of Allah. In fact, I'm the last messenger of Allah to you all, the whole world, not just the message to the black man in America, the whole planet Earth. He claimed the whole joint. Because see, if you read his first book, 1957, he's going to grow. I mean, you, you listen to Theology of Time. You you read his last book, Al Says Right, you're like, yo, he talked that God stuff over here. Over he grind the devils up in the 1930s, 1940s, 50s. But then he like, yo, he understood classism. You know what I mean? So now, now he's writing something that he never wrote over here. Over here in Al Saber as well. He now write, there's a few white Muslims who are Muslims by faith, though, not by nature. You know what I mean? Good but done by anyone has his reward. And these white people you know, that accept Islam is taught by Master Muhammad the Messenger, they will be blessed then into their own heaven or hereafter. Now, I mean, they will bless to be, be able to escape the great world destruction. Now, I mean, it, it told us, you know, we could seek refuge in the islands of the far Pacific and all the way out in New Zealand. I mean, those are the two specific points. Now, I mean, so it's a whole science. And he told us a lot about these angels. And, th and this is where a lot of people get lost because, they are so much into organized religion. I mean, they 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 can't really fathom that the nation of Islam is a divine nation, that we have a mission that's being guided by Master Far Muhammad himself. His will, aim, and purpose is coming to pass. So here you got a situation where Master Far Muhammad named the structures are lost temples of Islam. Then something happened. The Abu Elijah Muhammad seen something deeper. So he changed the teaching from a lost temple of Islam to Muhammad's temples of Islam. He changed that concept of Prophet W.D. Far to Allah, God, and the person of Master Far Muhammad, to whom all praises are due forever. He changed that teaching of Supreme Minister or Minister Elijah Muhammad to Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He used to say Prophet Elijah Muhammad. Then he changed nah, out. I ain't, I ain't doing Prophet Muhammad. Messenger. I'm not a Nabi. I mean, you know, I'm not, Prophet Muhammad is the Katim Nabi, according to the Holy Quran. And he's the seal of the prophets. His thing is, I'm the Rasul. The Holy Quran teach every nation gets a Rasul or messenger. And that messenger speaks the language of his or her people. All right. So he showed and proved that he was, is, and shall be the messenger of Allah God. Sakin. That's God in person. Sakin in Arabic means person. That's God in person. Allah, Sakin, is the God in person. That's the God by nature. That's the original man. That's talking about Master Muhammad. Now, I mean, he's the God in person to whom all praises are due forever. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he never underestimated the life-giving teachings of Master Muhammad. He understood that he was nation-building, but he also understood economics. He understood the time and what must be done. He understood where he was in the wilderness of North America. Now, I mean, you know, like when Elijah came to the woman and she was starving, she was hungry, she had a little um, baby with her. You know what I mean? She like, look, we can eat this pancake, just drop dead. We're going to start it. Lamb like, no, feed me, have faith. And those of us 
that have faith in the life-giving teachers, we ride with the messenger. You know what I mean? We ride or die with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, that causes schisms in the ranks sometimes. Now, I mean, you know, his own little brother, Jarvin, later known as Kalat Muhammad, the supreme captain, the first supreme captain of the nation of Islam, appointed by Master Farah Muhammad. Now, I mean, he could not understand what was going on, even though he was the supreme captain. Now, I mean, and he began to slander his brother, his big brother. Now, I mean, he thought his big brother was an error. But his big brother wasn't an era. Now, I mean, his big brother was being moved by the Ru Allahi, or the spirit of the God. Now, I mean, even though he understood Hua Allahi, he the God. So his movement was not the moves that others would make. His 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 mythology, what he said and didn't say, they just couldn't grasp it. Now I mean, but the messenger already showed and proved that he was the messenger of the Lord God in the person of Master Far Muhammad. So the messenger, he incorporated, there you go. Think about this. The messenger incorporated the nation of Islam on November the 25th of 1955 as the holy temple of Islam. Initially had uh, John Hassan as a trustee on the board. I'm not guessing. This is science, right? We're talking just easy, provable facts here. You know what I mean? He made the bylaws, got his signatures on it in 1958. And his movement stopped the devil from being able to persecute the righteous unjustly in an overt fashion. It stopped the devil from trying to bankrupt the nation of Islam because now he had non-profit status. But he made it clear, like, yeah, even though he incorporated the nation of Islam, he's like, we're not an organization. We're not a gang. <laughs> we're not a sect. I mean, we're not a tribe. We're a nation that will ultimately become, as he said in point number 12, a universal government of peace. That's the end game. I mean, but we, we're getting it. Now, we, 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 right now, we're like, okay, we're we getting buildings. Now, we get a little farm. Eventually, we're going to get the states. We're going to get them city states. We're going to build our towns. Now, I mean, once we mature in this thing, now, I mean, and quit acting all divided. So, that's, that's one thing that, I, you know, I'm out here in Coastville. You got Mexicans, and they got this deep cooperation going on. Now, I mean, like they, like far deep in the, in the car. Now, I mean, I, you know, I go down Lincoln Highway. It's like six of them living inside a upstairs apartment. And they got all these Mexican, Puerto Rican um, sisters. And they came together. And they pooled their little resources, education, and qualifications. And you know what they got on, across the street from um, the family doll out here? You know what I mean? On Lincoln Highway. They open up Sisters store. Now, when you go in the store, they got stuff straight from Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm talking about coconuts, avocados, mangoes, whatever. Now, I mean, bananas, fresh fruit. They got water ice. They got sodas. They, they got rolling papers. <laughs> they got blunt stuff. Now, I mean, they got potato chips, canned goods. You know what I mean, they got arcade machines in the back, gambling machines in the back. And they also took the bat and turned it into a kitchen. So every day they cook all this different food. You come in and, you you know, they cook different stuff every day. Delicious food. I ate there a few times. They got delicious food, but they live upstairs. You know what I mean? They they, they, they relate it. And it's, 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 it's sisters. They're called sisters. Imagine MGTs as sisters. Imagine five MGTs coming together. The messenger said, the messenger of the black man, he said, you know, two or three of y'all... Not to cut. Hey, come together. Open up your own barbershop. I mean, that's you. That's that, that's how you do that. Make it happen. Now, I mean, network. Now, I mean, you know, and you know, brothers like competition. They wanna who got the best sneaks? Who got the best car? 
uh, I got the Tesla, I got the Rolls, I got the new Phantom. I mean, I got the new Rolly. You know what I mean? I, I got three million people on my Instagram. You know what I mean? And in our competition, there is a disunity. There is a recession in economics because we can't reach the masses. Because everybody wants to be a little king and tribe over here, there, there, there. So we get spooked out like that. You know what I mean? Where if we was to take and work in harmony in conjunction with each other, that's how the universe operates. The universe. Uni means one. Universe. Word. To come together is that one word. Kun. Fire kun. It being it is. A law, an arm and leg, a leg, arm, meaning we're operating in operational unity. Now, I mean, we're not saying hydrogen is going to marry carbon. No, it's like, no, nah, that's not how the universe creates. The universe creates by operating with freedom, justice, and equality. In ancient Kemet or Black Egypt, they called it Mayat, balance. You know what I mean? It's, that's all it is. It's freedom. It's Islam. That's what real Islam is. Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam. You know what I mean? So you you don't have to join this branch or that branch. My thing is like that, that means everybody's going to be um, infected with a simple virus and everybody going to die off. It's just like that's not how the universe does things. You're not going to have a planet where it's one kind of fruit. It's one type of flower. It's going to be countless types of fruit, countless hybrid fruit. You know what I mean? Countless types of cars, countless hybrid cars, countless different types of airplanes, countless different types of cereals, sodas, whatever. That's just the human nature. You know what I mean? That's just the human creation. You know what I mean? How the atoms operate. You know what I mean? And we got to understand that principle because we we thinking that Democrats are at odds with Republicans and independents. And Bernie, um, Trump, Biden, they all working for the maintenance of the White House and uphold their rule of the, um, their, their supreme law of the land, the Constitution of the United States of America. They, they, they all work together. They be like, oh, Putin is doing this and Biden is trying to help um, this and this. Like, no, they all are members of the United Nations. <laughs> the ten percent is not stupid. No, I mean George Soros. The ten percent, they like man. It's all about a dollar. They like oh, they'll they'll definitely now they'll gang war. They'll take money from each other. I mean, and they laugh about that. You got me. You know what I mean? Damn. Okay, I'm gonna get you back. You know what I mean, it's it's fun competition with them. You know what I mean, they vibe with one another on imperialism. You know what I mean, but. We look at it like, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm Muslim. I'm not going to no masjid. I'm not going to no temple. I'm Jehovah Witness. I'll never go inside of a synagogue. Well, they, they don't worship Jesus the way I worship Jesus. And this spookism allows the same devil to rule over all these spiritually adept people. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So that happened back in 1950. Five, the messenger was wise enough to like get with the Secretary of the State of Chicago, Illinois, to get with the IRS agent. They give you an IRS agent when you do that. When you get your ING, ING means employer identification number. You know what I mean? They they give you your ING or employer identification number, which is basically like you could say like a a secretary or a counselor, like if you have any questions for the IRS, instead of going all through these thousands of agents and you number all these different companies coming at them getting all mixed up, they'd be like, no, we're going to we're going to sign you an IRS agent that basically um, monitors your 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 corporation. You know what I mean, now you on the tip like the land. Once he did that, that's 1955. Now keep in mind they broke in the 1930s. Nation Islam poured in the mug in the 1940s. They struggling like a mug. But they start getting paper. They start opening up their own printing press, the best. They start getting the best trucks and getting farmland and cattle. And, I mean, and they had problems, you know what I mean, internally and externally. That's all in the struggle. Like, come on, fam. Everything's real. You know what I mean? But uh, two years later, two days after Savings Day, February the 28th, 1957, the message changed that 
a Lost Temple of Islam number two headquarters in Chicago, Illinois, and legally, officially, according to, you could say, the state laws, he transformed it into Muhammad's Temple number two of the Holy Temple of Islam. Now, when Master Muhammad, he's like, the lost foundation of Islam in the wilderness of North America. Now, I mean, you know, it's, it's the... It's the um, a lost temple of Islam number one in Detroit, a lost temple of Islam number two in Chicago, and twelve in Philadelphia, twenty seven in Los Angeles, sixty six out Jacksonville, whatever. Now I mean, the messenger kept that foundation, but he modified his mathematics to become more efficient and to make more progress. Smart, like, like, like why would you, if 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 your if your grandfather invented a black and white TV, and your father is still watching a black and white TV, and his grandkids is watching, he, he turned over in his grave like, yo, yo. the messenger said, and I'll say it's about, he said, naturally, look at the word, naturally, you can improve on the thing. Naturally, you can improve on the thing. Naturally, you can improve on the thing once you have a make or model of it. The, the fourth Model T card, ain't nobody driving them through, unless they, they got an antique and they just, you know, collecting them as a collector. That thing's like, man, we have way more efficient cars that we could use. Now, I mean, my grandmother wouldn't touch a microwave. I mean, you know, she used the the, the um old fashioned blue flame gas. She, I mean, she, 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 she burned that. Now, I mean, you know, but, you know, my wife got the electric stove up there. She don't use the old fashioned stove my grandmother used. You know what I mean? Not that it was something, it was, it was, it served its purpose in my grandmother's time. You know what I mean? I, I remember as a as a child, my grandma was cooking on that stove and she had a bathrobe on and she did something and her robe caught on fire. And I was like, Grandma, your robe on fire. It, it wasn't bad. We just put put it out and everything. And she just kept on cooking. But the stove up there, we ain't got to worry about, about no, no, the road getting caught on fire, nothing like that there. Now, I mean, and the children in the future, they're going to have something even more efficient. I don't know what that's going to be. Maybe they're going to be able to vibrate atoms. They'd be like, oh, no, you y'all cook food back in the day. Nowadays, you just um push a button and the food cook itself in a container. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing. You know I mean, because there's no limit to possibilities when it comes to the future. You now I mean when it when it comes to the new. And a lot of people fear the new. Now a lot of fears is justifiable. You now I mean you know meaning that you don't want to change the premise. You don't want to leave your foundation. Like you don't you don't want to um put yourself in a situation where you're straying away or deviating from the truth. I mean, so we, we gotta, you know I mean, we gotta keep it together. Now, I mean, and this is why, like, I'd be like, I, I ain't with, um, you're not auditing me. <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna do, nah, nah, I mean, but I don't see that as something that would make me think you're a hypocrite or a disbeliever. It's like, I mean, it's like, all right, some brothers, sisters, use mythologies that work for them. I, it may not work for me. I, I may I may be a little biased. And I mean, I don't like white folks like that. I respect them, but my thing is like, L. Ron Hubbard, ah, nah, I mean, <laughs> not at all. Nah, I mean, but at the same time, I'm not going to let that stop the struggle. I'm not going to let that hinder me from giving my love and support to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or... This believer believe I'm obliged. Mom is still alive. I'm like, okay, I don't. But do you believe in messing the black man? Yeah, I do too. You think how do you live work? I do too. You believe Master Mom is God in person? I do. We agree on so much stuff. Of course, we're gonna have even brothers that I soldier with. We differ on stuff. Know what I mean, I, I bump heads with my wife probably every single day. But we've been together over thirty years. I mean. That don't mean I'm a I'm a um kick her to the curb or she gonna kick me to the curb. You know what I mean? Because we have disagreements or we don't see things eye to eye on something. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? She's like 
She likes stuff real clean and neat and I'm busy. I'm like, man, I, I put paper, I throw the stuff on the floor and I mean, I get that tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I got to write notes to myself. You know what I mean? I'm busy. You know what I mean? So, so, so we have the respect each other, but her thing would be like, oh, we getting company. I'm cleaner than her. I, I'm not a clean up. You know what I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm not to put on my suit and bow tie. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not to do that stuff too. You know what I mean? You know, I could, I could, I could get formal. You know what I mean? But I like casual. I like to just, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't even like, I don't even like, um, I'm a lone wolf, first of all. I've always been a lone wolf. You know what I mean? I was born the only son. So I, I never, I never really, even, even in the mentally dead world, I like, I'm comfortable in my own skin. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, it's like, it's like, I'm comfortable, um, moving along so people would be like you're a mess why are you moving to, you know we got supreme agents that's that's the real boys like that they be like prime i'll give them secure like i don't need no security you know what i mean i'm good you know what i mean you know i'm i'm not i'm not um doing anything you know what i mean where it's like as far as you know if i'm if i'm if i feel as though something or someone's a threat I, I could take care of that. I mean, I mean, I I, I got knowledge of self. I mean, I I can secure you. I mean, so so that that's how that go. Now I mean, so so my thing is like peace of mind and contentment. Now I mean, we 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 grind it. So um, Muhammad's Temple of Islam was incorporated as a legal nonprofit. The charter number is, I'm going to give you the charter number, 1684736 is registered with the Illinois Secretary of State on March 12th, 1957. All signed, stamped documents are now with the state records of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. You know, Iman Wurfti Muhammad and all of them, when the messenger, um, you could say died or you believe he's still alive. He was reported dead. It was, a, you know, all the money. <laughs> the message had all these bank accounts. I just, it's, a, it's a deep book about the bank accounts. But, you know, the hypocrites stole all the nation money. They took the land, sold stuff. You know I mean, they taking the message of fezzes, rings, taking watches, shoes. You know I mean, it's so, it's so much stolen loot. It's like ancient Egypt <laughs> being raided, I mean, by the colonizers. In the future, you're going to see at auction houses people trying to sell the message of bow tie. That's, that's how that crap went down. Know what I mean? So, know what I mean? Donald Miss Farrakhan didn't want to get involved in all that. Know what I mean? So he moved He moved in his own mathematical way on, on something like, man, I'm, I'm not even going to feed. Know what I mean? But, you know, you had some 10 percenters. That always was in the ranks. That's 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 there. Even when the message was here, the message was like, look, they 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 robbing us. <laughs> I mean, you know. So you so everything's real. But the thing was, from the messenger incorporating the stuff, the judge looking at the incorporation papers, looking at how this thing structured, he like, oh, this stuff don't belong to the children. This stuff belongs to the believers. Now I mean. You know, it's it's like FOIs and MGTs, you know what I mean? Out there doing fish fries and baking bean pies and selling Muhammad Speaks and you know what I mean they, they work hard. They in the snow doing that stuff. You know I mean they donating when they really can't afford it. You know what I mean they want to see this nation up and running, up and flying. You know what I mean? You know, so 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 you know, to have people come in and just Take Master Far Muhammad down. He's not, that's not God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the root. Down with Allah Muhammad is no messenger. He was a master teacher, a social reformer, and we're going to now follow Prophet Muhammad. It's like, oh, oh, oh. When the messenger said, we know about, you want to be over there, go over there and, and build your mad. Malcolm went and formed the Muslim Mosque Incorporated. Well, y'all go build <laughs> your own thing over Don't take our money and our faith and our belief and our teachers. And they even had it so bad. They was trying to say nobody could publish or print the books or the teachings of the envelope. They was trying to monopolize the teachings. And the judge was like, nah, 
y'all y'all tripping. Now I mean, you know, and that, and that's all that's in it. Now I mean, especially when the paperwork ain't in order. See what I'm saying? You know, it's like some people even reported that the Alba Lodge Muhammad had an actual videotape will, but he didn't need to write a will or have a video will, in my opinion. His will was the will of Allah who came to person as far as Muhammad to my praises do forever. We knew what the nation of Islam was doing. You know what I mean? So, so my point in all this is I want y'all to understand as it is on a macrocosm of the nation of Islam, the big picture, it's like that on the microcosm, the small scale. You now I mean? It's like you have to teach your family the importance of if they if they 18 or older everyone in that house should have a 700 or higher credit score i mean you know if if you are married or single you should have an irs recognized 501c3 non-stock non prime i'm i'm going to give you some short math you take and get $125. The IRS just lowered the price, so I, I can't remember the exact thing. I'm going to take an educated guess. I believe it they, It was like almost $500. They lowered it to like, I think it's like two, $275. I'm not too sure about that. I already got mine. I had my, you know what I mean? I had, I had Cam Incorporated back in the 80s. I got Holistic Health Ward and all institute. We already got IRS recognition. I, in my head, I'm like, fruit spooky in the mug if they if they if they don't know how to move with this stuff that's i look at it like that fruit spooky that's a, that's the only that's the only practical realistic way it's like you're too militant you're too pro-black that you ain't trying to get none of this devil's money you ain't get, it's like i'm not asking you take that's taking reparations but the, the the messenger incorporating the nature of Islam, that's not gangster. That's God stuff. <laughs> that's the, that's how that's how the gods move. Now I mean, it's like it's like Solomon, according to the Holy Quran, he had devils that used to dive for him. Now not dive, dive, dive in like in water. Now I mean, go fishing for him. Now, I mean, it's a science. Like you gotta respect the game. Now, I mean, you is the messenger. The messenger is like when he had his last savings day. He like. We got the flag of Islam up and we're still on the white man's soil. You. Now, a person could say, well, the black man owns the earth. Yeah, but do you have nuclear bombs? Do you have a standing army with flying vehicles hoovering in the atmosphere? Do you have missile silos under the ground that can send missiles from under the ocean floor and blow up an entire city with the push of a button. I mean, it's like Revelations chapter 13, the prophecies. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It's like this devil, he's he's in the war and killing it. He, oh, dude, he take his mask off. You be like scared to death. But you know what scares the devil? The teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is scared scared to death that black people are waking up. You don't know this. They acting like they saying strong. They scared to death. Now you have conscious, sincere, righteous, striving white people that love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They love black people coming into their own because they know this is going to bring balance back to the planet. Now, I mean, you have brothers that is mature in themselves and secure in themselves. And they like, yo, we can't reform the planet by being like the white man. I mean, we can't like the brothers can't come in as male chauvinist like, oh, woman, me, Tarzan, you, Jane. <laughs> she like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Negro, please, you know good and well some of these sisters are smarter than the mug. The messenger tells us that in, in the theology of time. He says, we got, we got, he said, he said, um, the sun is crowned with those nine planets. He said, some of them sisters can rule over us. I mean, you could, he said, brother, don't take up for nothing. She's something too. 
remember, Dr. Yakub was like, I'm going to make a nation of gods, quote, and goddesses out of you. The ones that grafted the devil Yakub thing was like, listen, y'all going to have money. This Everything Yakub promised them, they got it. Think about that. I mean, it's a science there. Now, I mean, the messenger told us Islam is peace of mind and contentment, money, good homes, and friendships in all walks of life. Now, I mean, I'm in my good home. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm good. Now, I mean, but, you know, maybe we're going to move to a bigger home, a better home. But but, but that's the, I mean, I, I was living in an apartment out Whiteland West, out Exton. I mean, the apartment was $1,200 a month. It wasn't no shabby apartment. I mean, it was $1,200 a month. Beautiful. But it was convenient for my wife. I'm in the belly of the beast, so I'm moving a certain way. We get money wherever we at. We make it happen. You, If you drop me in a hole, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to make it happen. I mean, because I have knowledge of self. And when you understand Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam, God adds and multiplies, the devil divides the trap. You know how to make things happen instead of sitting around waiting for things to happen. The messenger said, the Christians don't, they talk that Jesus stuff, but they don't sit around praying to the sky for, for God to send them now some, 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 some food. You know what I mean? They make it happen. They answer their own prayers. That's the, that's the science. We have to learn how to answer our own prayers. You know what I mean? So just as the messenger moved on a national level, imagine each individual FOI making himself or herself tax exempt. As an individual, you're a nation of one, an army of one. I mean, you see that God in the mirror. You see that goddess in the mirror. You're like, I'm not depending on the minister to pay my bills. My babies ain't going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm a registered believer. Is the nation going to feed me? No. <laughs> the elders be like, oh, I'm, you know, as, as I'm going to get my health care from the nation, you 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 got a cab. You better you better get with the white man and get you a health care. You better get with HPP, uh, Health Partners Plus, or you you better get with Keystone something. Know what I mean, you you better you better make something happen. Know what I mean, that's how it goes. You got you got spooky brothers and sisters that's that's sitting around waiting on the mystery guy. That's why that's why I tell Supreme Angels like I don't have no followers. If you if you're sitting in a prison waiting on a God outside of yourself <laughs> to free you, you're getting spooky, fam. If you're sitting in a house and your lights went out and you're, you're waiting for <laughs> some minister, some captain, some secretary to come pay your bills, you're getting spooky, fam. They want to know, why are you in a position where you can't pay your bills? Why are you not in the law library so that you can strive to free yourself? Now, as not a minister, but as a brother, as a sister, we're going to help you to help yourself. See, sometimes you got to give a person a fish until they're able to catch their own fish. So sometimes, you know, I, I give you, I give out fish because sometimes people need it. Some, I may need it. You know what I mean, but sometimes we don't want people to be dependent on us. You know what I mean, we don't want you spooky. You know what I mean, you'd be like, oh, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to um, pray to a God outside of Masfar Muhammad. We don't do that, fam. We don't set up partners with the law. You know what I mean, we know who we are. We know what, what we have to do on this planet to make things happen. You know what I mean? So it's better to have money that you don't need than to need money that you don't have. You know what I mean? You know, like like um, my beloved young boys out here, you know what I mean? The, the devil just ran up on like 20 of them, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Took all that money. They was making like $12,000 a day out here. You know what I mean? The devil took all the money. You know what I mean? Took all the guns. You know what I mean? All the property. So now... They can't even get a lawyer. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's like, I got to put money on that commissary books. It's like, it's a different, it's like, yo, God, was it worth it? No. I mean, we can't, we can't put this new Islam. We can't, we can't, we can't put this uh, messenger teachings 
And as the Bible put it, you can't put new wine in old skins. Now, I mean, it, it, we can't, we're not going to build a righteous nation using the corruption of Yakub civilization. I don't care what it is. It's like, nah, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not even worth it. It's better, as the scientists put it, that wrote the prophecies, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness, and everything else going to be added unto you. The rest going to come. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's like, it's like that's, that's going to mathematically come. You know what I mean? But you're going to have to strive. Allah loves those that strive, and we don't get nothing but what we strive for. You could pray all day. <laughs> I mean, but like Jesus told Peter, you know, he's like, listen, I need y'all to be on post. Y'all got to watch as well as pray. I mean, watch before praying. I mean, the Holy Quran teaches the same thing, just in a different way. The Holy Quran say, if it's four of y'all making prayer, don't make salat together. Let two take post with their swords. <laughs> the other two, y'all go ahead and make salat. Then after y'all make y'all prayers, then y'all stand up and y'all take post with y'all swords. And then let your brother... At least, and, and, and that's how a lot of the righteous Muslims spiritually and literally got their heads cut off by the devils, by the enemies. Enemies within, enemies without. Now, I mean, so, you know, the short version is you want to get that state nonprofit. Now, Certain state, like you may be, say, in Florida, it may be $75. You may be in New York, it may be $200. Now, I mean, maybe in California, it might be $300. Pennsylvania is $125. Now, I mean, it's $125 in Pennsylvania. The new IRS, you know, if, if I remember, I'll put it on the screen. I, I'll be doing this stuff single handedly, so you got to forgive me on my sloppiness with it. I, 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 it's not. How I'm saying it, it's what I'm saying that's important. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to give you preaching. I'm trying to give you some poor righteous teachings. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, you know, show off or none of that. My thing is trying to help you to help yourself. You know what I mean? So the IRS, John, I think it's like $275. let us say $300. So here you got $125. Now, I'm going to give you a timeline. This is March, whatever, March 10th, 11th, whatever. If you yourself went on charity, say your state, pacharity.gov, newyorkcharity.gov, um, cacharity.gov, Florida charity, whatever state you're in. You now, I mean, if you're out Atlanta, Georgia, georgiacharity.gov, now you directly plug with your phone, laptop, whatever, to the secretary of your state. And it's technically two separate forms. That's, that'd be confusing some people. You got to do your charter, but you got to do another little document. I mean, you know, a doctor sheet. So it's basically like three pieces of paper. When you, I would say probably take you maybe like a half hour to fill it out, no more than an hour, quicker than taxes. So you, you got your state charter, the state license for your charity set up. Whatever name you want to use, you know, I mean, just make sure it's, it's not somebody else's name. Like, say um, it's your family. You'd be like um, the family of, of um, whatever. One thing I, I do want to, it's a lot of little nuances go with you. But the short version is you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. I, I made a mistake pigeonholing myself on um, my first and second nonprofit. My first one was Kareem Abdul Muhammad Incorporated. And, you know, we had Supreme Angel, Quiet Air, Thoughts of Peace be upon him. He's going down to car dealers getting Benzes, <laughs> I mean, for free. You know what I mean? But 911 happened. Anything with the name Muhammad was looked at as terrorist stuff. So I was like, oh, man. So, so you can, under your charity, you can have as many subdivisions as you want. Like, you can have Kareem Abdul Muhammad, um, kids and mothers, keep all money, whatever. You can have, I just use CAM Incorporated to simplify, but it still hurt the, because the, we was building the business credit and all that under the name Kareem Abdul Muhammad. You know what I mean? So the persecution came on, on that name. You know what I mean? All right. My wife 
has been a registered nurse in the state of Pennsylvania for over 30 years. So she worked at Devereaux, Bayada, you name it. Now, I mean, that's, that's, she, she vicious with the nursing stuff. So I hooked up for her holistic health ward. But that word health locked the charity in on health care stuff. Now, I mean, so as I got older and more in, deeper into the game and learned through trial and error, I'm giving y'all the shortcut. So now I have NAL Institute. NAL, N-A-A-L. I use the name NAL because a close friend of mine, Brother Minister Nazir Law, physically died, Philadelphia Supreme Angel, good brother. So I always used to um, grind him up. You know what I mean? Because he used to work so hard. And I was like, man, you got to work smarter, not harder. You know what I mean? So before he died, I was I told him, I said, listen, we're going to hook up a nonprofit together. I'll pay for everything, set everything all up. But I'm going to make you um, a partner with this joint. But he, he, he died of pneumonia, what have you. So I said, okay, I'm going to call it N-A after Nazir and A-L after Ali. N-A-A-L, NAL, Institute. We're going to teach education. We're going to teach people the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of self. So it's the NAL Institute Incorporated. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's the way I would tell somebody how to do it if I knew it 40 years ago. I would be like, no, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. It's better to ask when, when, when a creditor or someone looks at your company you don't want them to know it's the nation of Islam. It's from Muhammad. It's from the FOI, the MG, the 5%, we the minorities, 10% the rich folks, you know what I mean? But if you had it where, um, say, instead of nation of Islam, say it, say it said, um, um, nation nations i'm just going off the top of my head say you said nations best incorporated i mean they don't know if you sell trucks strawberries if you do hair <laughs> i mean whatever so you're in the position you can do anything you want with that corporation so that's step one getting getting set up on a state level then that's going to take like a month on average it's like i would say 30 to 40 days so let's say round it off it's, it's March 10th, say April 10th, you you good to go. You 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 you're in operation. Now you want the IRS recognition. Now the IRS is going to be like, you can't come to us unless you pay like 270. So you get the IRS to 275 dollars, and you um, file for the IRS recognition. Now they're going to take. They, they more busier, you know what I mean? Budget cuts, whatever. But say they take 90 days or something. Now you got your state... No, let me let me backtrack. You got your state charter to, in 30 days. You take that state charter, you take your driver's license or state ID, whatever, and you go down to whatever bank you want to go to, or, you know, uh, um, whatever, savings and loans, whatever you're dealing with, and you put $100 in the business checking account in the name of your company. Just a hundred dollars. They give you a little debit card. Check, you know, they might do it right there. They may send it to your house, whatever. But you now have a business account opened up in your state. Okay. Now you take and get the IRS recognition. Now you got the the um IRS recognition letter, like two main pieces of paper, but it's gonna have your EIN or employee identification number on it. And it's going to have your IRS agent name on it and the IRS actual phone number that you could call that agent and the IRS agent's badge number be on it. And it's going to have your name and address on it, whatever. So now you hook up whatever, you know what I mean, you, you, you down the grind part. You know what I mean? You say you get with your local supermarket. Be like, look, I'm trying to um, help these children, I'm trying to help the elders, veterans, prisoners, black folks, Jewish folks, whatever. Donate some fruits and vegetables to help me feed the homeless, whatever. They like, it's a tax write-off. They be like, cases of stuff come to your house. I need some toys for, for Christmas. I want to get a kid some free stuff. I need a, I need a car so I can 
take um, families to go visit their incarcerated loved ones. I need I need a van to take families to go visit their incarcerated. I need a, a, a truck so I could take carpenters and painters and um, construction workers to go rehab some donated houses that we got from the city. It's just no limit. You you take it from there. Now I mean I I, I personally know a brother over uh Jersey um from years ago and I'm proud that that he moved mathematically and wisely. He has a um nations builder joint where it's nothing but the gods. And what he do is take brothers that came home from jail that know how to paint do plumbing, electrical work, install windows, do roofing, the whole nine. And he simply just get with the um the city and get old abandoned properties, old trap houses, whatever. Everybody got locked up, the trap houses said, give me that raggedy joy. Let me fix, let us, let us fix that. And they go in, you know what I mean? Like Habitat for Humanity. They go in like um out in Chester County. They have um good works. You know what I mean? They come out, fix houses, paint, whatever. The government give them money for that. I mean, they, they the small business administration cut them a check. I mean, you know, they 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 they, they the car dealer to be like, yo, I got this gas guzzling truck been sitting here for six months. Y'all can have that joint. That's a tax write off. But you need IRS form 8283. You got to get them a written acknowledgement. So you got to know how to operate with your nonprofit. Otherwise, you'll be like 99 percent of these LLCs and nonprofits like. Business and name only. <laughs> I mean, it's like you ain't doing nothing with it. you ain't eating off. You can't make it happen. You ain't helping nobody with that. Now I mean, so so it's a mathematical way to do that stuff. Now I mean, and it's it's so real. They tell they tell you on the, if you just go online and get the IRS form for free. All the IRS forms is one hundred percent free. Just go on irs.gov and just download and just look at just look at IRS form eighty two eighty three. Just read it tonight. Just Look at all, you know, you may not understand it. Just look it over because it's like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. You could donate artwork. <laughs> you could donate jewelry, paintings, cars, vehicles, real estate, farmland, yachts, helicopters. What the? Do you know our people that's on the underground hustling on the, on the negative side? When they learn the devil's game, that's why they don't want us in there. They know we going to take it over. Believe me, they know, and it, nobody going to be hungry. I mean, you going to, listen, these young people, they like, man, you going to see them come together. They, they going to be on a whole nother level with it. It's no doubt in my mind. You're going you're gonna to see young white Muslims of faith, like, yeah, the black man, God, the white man, the devil. What? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you going to see, um, brothers, I'd be like, yeah, he, he Hebrew is like, um, this brother here, he five percenter, this brother, um, he, he from the streets, he a blood, he a crip and we all getting money together. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they not going to let Yaku's law divine and conquer. See, that's how the devil is doing hip hop nations, religions. They come in and gossip. Oh yeah. I heard this one talk about this one. And now everybody backbiting each other, gossiping. As the messenger said, that's that's what Yaqub taught his followers to do. You know what I mean? And our lessons teaches us that once they have us fighting and arguing and killing each other, then they come in as the peacemaker and then they rule both sides. Then they take everything. Start all of Now we colonize all over again. This is how the devil keeps full. So, so it's like, it's not hip. To be a player hater. It's not it's not hip to want to go online and debate. <laughs> it's like, come on. Now I mean like like for real? Now I mean it's like we gonna beef on the internet? Like who does like for what? It don't even make no sense, fam. You, like look, this squad over here getting money. This squad over here getting money. But the devil come in and make a East Coast West Coast war. <laughs> I mean, they make they make a beef between this artist and this artist, this boss and that boss, this leader and this leader, this gladiator, this glad, this warrior and this warrior. I mean, and 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 now everybody slandering and gossiping and all this stuff. And the whole time, the ten percenters, the rich, they laughing all the way to the bank. They laughing, paying off their mortgage. 
they getting speedboats to go fishing. They they going on yachts just chilling. You know what I mean, laying laying back in the sun, cracking up like these fools. They just eighty five percenters. They mentally dead, just like Basfar Muhammad said. They be like, we bear witness to the teachings of Al Muhammad, and we also bear witness that they are not accepting the teachings of Al Muhammad. So when you when you get that status, you 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 know what I mean, you 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 do little things like. Paper towels, you know what I mean? You know where these paper towels came from? You know what I just, I went, to, I got a P.O. box. I went to the P.O. box and um, got the, this is the newest edition of the Uline catalog. You know what I mean? Uline, Quill, whatever. You know what I mean? It's a million ways you could do it. A million videos about building business credit and all that. So I leave all that to y'all. I want y'all to do it yourself. I be busy, so I don't want no player hating on me. You know what I mean? But you take and get your necessities, if you will. Like, say you, you need, like, my wife, she into, like, Lysol spray and, you know, because of COVID, you know, we still got Clorox wipes everywhere, I mean, bounties. We stock up on that stuff, all that stuff in the garage on shelves stocked all up, you know what I mean? You know, so it's like, it's like, you're going to need it anyway, so you, you're going to still wipe your behind, so you're going to use toilet paper. Why not get it from Quill? Why not order Bounty from Quill? Whatever the brand, I'm not promoting no brands or none of that, but whatever you're using, it may be a little more expensive because you can find it cheaper in certain places, but that misses the point. The thing you're trying to do is build business credit. So you, you take and spend $50 on cosmetics, as we call it, the belly of the beast. You get you get your stuff from Walmart or places that um, help you build business credit. You are using your business card. Know what I mean, when you do these transactions, now your Paydex score, like your good human personal credit score, is like seven hundred and higher. Say seven twenty, whatever. You good, but if you have good business credit, the highest you can go is 100. That's called a Paydex score. So the individual score, you need like, say 700 to 800 for perfect credit, good to perfect credit. On a business, you need an 80 to 100 to get good or perfect business credit. Once you get an 80 Paydex score, you get an 80 Paydex score, I would say, realistically, in like three months. Now, I mean, just, just doing a little buying certain, certain things in the name of your company, all right? Now that you, when you go on Dun & Bradstreet, whatever, you you know, you, you be like, okay, my pay that score is an 80. Now you take and can get a business spark credit card. Not in your name. Now, now it's, my thing is I don't come with nothing spooky. Sometimes it's best to rubber stamp the business card. Meaning if you got a 680 or higher credit card, credit score for your personal self, you go online and go to CapitalOne.com and you fill out the Spark card. You be like, I'm personally saying that I'm I'm back in that um business, I'm back in my own business. Um Car, even though I don't have to, I'm intentionally doing that because I'm not going to mess this money up. <laughs> I mean, so they'd be like, okay, 60 second approval. All right, card on the way. We're going to send you $10,000 in the mail. You got $10,000 spark card coming. All right, now you got the green $10,000 spark card. Don't be like uh, the average person and mess the credit up. <laughs> I mean, people, now you want to. Get a Lexus, a used Lexus. I mean, it's like, come on. Now, I mean, you take, you want to take and never use more than one third of that card. Now, if you don't use the card, you're not going to make money. You're not going to build, grow, build more business credit. You got to use the card, but you don't want to go over one third. Now, I mean, now I'm gonna give y'all the 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 the, 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 um, the 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 science part of it. It's actually 38 percent. Not 33% or one-third. It's actually, that's what Bank of America, this is what rich people do. Rich people think is, no, we want to see 
do you pay your bills? We don't want you paying 50%. If you utilize 50% of that credit, you could download for free the Credit Karma app on your phone, CK. Now, I mean, and that'll give you a credit score, let you see your credit cards, monitor your stuff 24 7. Now, I mean, but the thing is, if you use 38% or less of that card every month, and when, don't wait for the 30 day billing cycle. When you use the card, say, say you got some um, bounty, a case of bounty came to the house or whatever, and you, you owe. $55. It have to be 50 or more dollars. So always don't look for sales. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't understand. They'll buy all this stuff, some Clorox wipes, some Lysol, some bounties. And it was the bounty was on sale this month. So now it came to um 40. Your bill was $52.60. And you sent it 50 and nothing happened because your stuff only costs $48. They charge you a shipping and handling fee separate. That had nothing to do with the company joint. UPS delivered the stuff or whatever. So you want, don't be petty with it. Spend that $50 in full. Buy something for, say, my recommendation, $55. Then pay shipping and handling. So all together, like, all right, this one I sent, I had to pay, I owe $60. But I use the card to get it. They'll ship it to you. It come in one day. Like usually, especially you line and quill, they they gonna send the stuff as soon as possible. You might get it in one to three days, no more than a week tops, depending on where you live. But once you get the um stuff, in there is gonna be a piece of paper, an invoice. You take that out, and it's gonna be like, okay, you owe fifty six dollars. You you got thirty or ninety days to pay the bill. Nah. That day, <laughs> you go online, take another credit card, and pay that in full. You take your, your bank debit card, pay that bill in full. You write a check or money order out and mail it to them today. So they going to get paid early every single time. What is going to happen? Mathematics, Islam. I'm, I'm teaching y'all Islam. Mathematically, Islamically, manna from heaven, not a magical guy. The mathematics of mass form, I'm the messenger using the teachers and the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of yourself. Now you in a position that you can take that same pay that score and get you go online and fill out the ten thousand dollar orange saver card. That come in the mail. You're like, oh, I got ten thousand three months ago on this card. Now I got ten thousand on this card. Dang, I got. Oh, let me talk. My license was 125. I had to pay the IRS 300. It's about like 500. Set this thing up. I had to put 100 in the bank, but that immediately was available on my debit card. So that don't even count. Under 500. And within six months, I got $20,000 in my pocket, in my wallet, of the female, in my pocketbook. All right, fruit. Now, <laughs> body, body. <laughs> I mean, fruit is best. MGT. Like, okay. Now, you got 20,000. You'd be like, okay, I'm not going to mess this 20000 up. See, I can mess it up, but why mess it up? You could file bankruptcy on the company. Why mess up the 20 stacks? That's that's like hustling backwards. If you're in the dead world, that's like somebody giving you a pack and you messing that up. You're like, you messed up the chump check. You, I mean, that's that's like somebody um, being in a position where you could keep doing that. You know what I mean? You wash and rinse the exact same system. Now you're like, oh, dang, okay. Um. Uh, I remember, I remember um, real life, real story. Years ago, I'm in a store with my wife. Had to, we had to go get something. I went to get something. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was I needed a laptop or something. The buttons broke on the laptop. We go to um, Best Buy. So um, she gray used one of the business cards or something like that. So I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm North Philly. The hustle come out all the time. Excuse me, miss. Um, do y'all... Give out um, credit cards here. She said, oh, yes, you can get a credit card. You fill this out, you get an instant approval. Instant approval? Yeah, just fill out this. They gave us a Best Buy credit card in like five minutes. That card was like $2,500. So we didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you'd be like, that $2,500, turn to 5000 
I mean, you go over here now. Now you got a you got a gas card. Now I mean, you know, you 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 use your gasoline. Now I mean, the IRS is like gasoline for nonprofits is tax deductible. Now I mean, business related stuff is all write offs. Now I mean, I I got I got a two laser printers in here. Now I mean, tax write offs. I mean, I I, put, I send literature all over. It's like oh, um. Your nonprofit, you go to the post office, you go online and just look out um the postmaster general's gonna be like nonprofit postal permits. <laughs> I mean, they be on the tip like, you don't have to pay the mail stuff no more. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, you be like, we waiting now. We they they've been dragging their feet. I ain't even get a chance to call. I meant to be call these jokers, but I was telling y'all before, every state has a federal surplus building. In Pennsylvania, whatever is the capital, it's Harrisburg. Short version. Every day, thousands of items get left and lost on airports and trains or whatever. The federal government, the Army, Navy, Air Force, the Pentagon, whatever, I mean, they have equipment like say, I'm just using this for example, say a um, Say the IRS building. The IRS building have, say, say they got 3,000 computers in there. But they've been in there for like three, three, five years. That's like an old car to them. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a bread truck can't, even though it worked perfect, they be like, it's 100,000 miles on it. We can't use this truck no more. We got to get new ones after that. Keep them on the road. We, 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 we deliver soda, cigarettes, whatever. We get rid of the old. Donate, they could donate those trucks to your nonprofit. You get your federal surplus application in, which is free. They just want to see your documentation, make sure everything is IRS recognized. Now you can go to Harrisburg. And when you go to Harrisburg, I've been in the building. They, they'll have um, chairs, desks, laptops. Anything you could think of the federal from the federal, I mean, jelly beans, beef jerky. <laughs> I mean, you know, but, but they have a lot of used stuff. Like, say it was a military general's desk. Too big for me to have shipped all the way to the crib. I ain't had a space. But the desk was a big, giant oak. You know what I mean, where in a store, that joint is like 30 something thousand. Your nonprofit get it for like $30. Now, I mean, um, a Mac book laptop that'll cost you, say, $1,000, you get it for like $50. Now, I mean, somebody left a presidential Rolex and some luggage, I mean, on a joint, it's worth $3,500. You get it $120. It's your nonprofit. I mean, you know, your nonprofit, you could you could go to your you could go down Jewelers Road to the Jews. I ain't talking black Jews, white Jews. I'm saying the Jews. <laughs> I mean, you could go down to the Jew Jewish jewelry store and be like, listen, you ain't gotta go. You could email them, call them, whatever. You'd be like, listen, um, this summer we want to do a little event. Now I mean, um we're whatever neighborhood has the lowest incidence of violence. We want all federal crimes to drop in the hood. Whatever whatever neighborhood has the lowest incidence of violence, we want to give them um, a plaque. We want to give um, that neighborhood um, a free trip, a free block party, and we want to give all the um, young boys on that on that block a 18 karat gold charm and um chain that says neighborhood peace or something NP no, neighborhood peace whatever I mean I'm just using this cuz you got to think on your own I I can't do your job for you but the jeweler thing is I can't just do it out the kindness of my heart but if I if I get if I make fifty of these chains, it's gonna cost me seventy eight thousand. But if you give me a written acknowledgement, when we fill out this eighty two eighty three form, the IRS gonna give me my money, and the youth get their chains, the youth get that their cars, 
they get that graduate, the ones that graduate was on the honor roll, they get that free trip to Africa or whatever. You know what I mean, it's, it's, it's no limit to how you, it's, but the thing about it is the only limitation is what we put on it. I mean, your your imagination, the messenger asked Master Far Muhammad about the possible and the impossible. And the, and the Savior explained to him, he said, brother, we don't believe in the impossible. How could this or that be impossible when we live in a universe that exists and once upon a time the universe didn't exist? We got 230, 640 quadrillion miles of stars and moons and planets and creatures and humans. It's like none of this didn't used to exist at one time. That right there takes away the impossibility for the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream, the planet Earth, the God of the universe. How could something be impossible? All we got to do is put our mind to it, family. All we got to do is have the right thought, the dominant thought. We have to have that magnetic attraction to righteousness and repel the wickedness. See, that's how you're able to answer your own prayers. So I'm going to stop here for the day. And inshallah, Sakeem, we're going to pick up tomorrow on some more of the FYMGT Money Man. And don't forget, you can order the actual book. You know what I mean? Peace, family. One love. The struggle continues. And remember, only the messenger's message can guide you through this age of mess.